What is up, s'mores? Welcome back to me. We're analyzing things today. I would like to talk about Mike Wheeler's queer coding in season one of Stranger Things. I've had this idea for quite a while now. I, like a few months ago, I rewatched Stranger Things and I took note of every time that boy breathed or did anything because I became hyper fixated on his character. But I watched the whole show and my brother and mother can attest to it. I was literally sitting on my phone just taking notes of everything he did and said. And over the course of that, I noticed a lot of things about his character. And then I was like, wait a minute, why don't I just compile all of the queer coding from all four seasons into one big video? And then I realized, one, that would take forever. And two, um, that would be the longest video ever. And so I've decided to split it up into four videos. And this is the season one video. So yeah, there's the setup. All right, before I begin though, quick little disclaimer. These are all opinionated. I am not the Duffer Brothers, clearly. I am just a random kid who's coming up with these theories. I like to share my fun thoughts about my, my favorite shows. It just makes me happy and I like hearing other people's thoughts. And so that's why I'm here. And I think that it'd be really cool if Mike and Will got together. That's, see, I'm a huge filer. That's what I want. But if that's not what you want, that's totally chill, that's cool. Like, you have your opinions, I have mine. Everyone's opinions are completely valid. But just remember, everything I'm about to say, even if I present it like a fact, is still an opinion. All these things are all opinionated. They're the way that I perceive the show. And if you agree or disagree with me, that's great. And I would love to hear your thoughts. Just remember to be respectful, not just to me, but especially to other people. Just remember to be kind. Because, like, we all love the same show, guys. We all love this show. And dividing ourselves into these little, like corners like this corner likes Malevin and that corner likes Byler and this corner hates this character and this corner likes this character it's like why can't we all just enjoy the show and agree to disagree on some things you know what I mean I'm a multi-shipper I ship like literally hundreds of things and to tons of them I bet you'd agree and disagree with it doesn't really matter it's just how you perceive the show and how you enjoy the show and if you enjoy the show by not giving a crap about the ships that's great for you. That's awesome. If you love the ships and that's why you watch the show, that's also great. And if you watch it for a certain character, that's great for you. I'm glad that you have that character. But just remember to be kind to each other because even if you have a different opinion than someone else, just be kind, you know, because we all love this show and that should unite us and not divide us. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm going to stop with my little rant and get to the actual video because I've been filming for the past four minutes and I haven't actually gotten to my point yet. Anyways, so this is structured like this. I'm basically just going to go through each time I notice something that I think could point towards Byler or Mike being gay or bi. I'm not going to say which one because honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm saying that he could be gay or bi. So yeah, I wrote a whole script and I like I tried to improve my handwriting throughout this process so I'm very proud of this okay all right season one episode one at 19 minutes and 23 seconds Joyce and Hopper discuss Will's disappearance and the bullying he experiences in school the town is theorizing slash insinuating that he was hate crimed I'm using this as an example that Stranger Things does have queer coding for canonically queer characters such as Will and even Robin in later seasons Not like most he, he has a couple of friends, but, you know, kids, they're, they're mean. They make fun of him. They call him names. They, they laugh at him, his clothes. His clothes? What's wrong with his clothes? I don't know. Does that matter? Maybe. Look, he's... He's a sensitive kid. Lonnie... Lonnie used to say he was queer. Called him a... Is he? He's missing, is what he is. At 3516, Ted says, you see, Michael, you see what happens. This is in regards to Will being missing. You see, Michael, see what happens? What happens when what? I'm the only one acting normal here. I'm the only one that cares about Will. Mike says, what happens when what? I'm the only one acting normal here. I'm the only one that cares about Will. This semi-heated dinner conversation that ended with um, three of the Wheelers storming off, Nancy, Mike, and Karen, was about Steve, Will, and Ted. I find this interesting for a multitude of reasons. For one, all three Wheelers are frustrated for, for, at, or with their love interests or alleged love interests when it comes to Mike. So I find it interesting that Mike is being mirrored slash paralleled with his sister who is angry she can't see her boyfriend and Karen, her, his mother, who is angry at her husband. This just feels intentional because he's being mirrored with two specific people in his family and so it just feels... It feels like intentional coding to me, but then again, it could also just be, could just be a coincidence. So yeah, but that's just the current theory. Um, in this episode, Mike is wearing a blue shirt with yellow stripes. I do talk about his costuming quite a bit in this because I feel like 
His costuming is super important to the story. So Mike Wheeler's outfit was written to, into the script that way, and it was written that our guy would go, oh, hey, cool shirt. So we knew we'd wanted something that felt like an outfit maybe he would have bought at the airport before he got there. <laughs> so it's kind of hokey. You know, it says surf on the back, and there's surfboards, and it's bright. It's not a color that Mike normally wears, and he would have accessorized it with a hat and sunglasses with croquis, knowing he was going to be outside in the sun. We had made two colorways. We made orange and teal, and he's worn teal before, so it felt like orange was the best color that was different from his closet that felt like he was trying to make it work in California. It's interesting because he's definitely influenced by Eddie, so we added a little darkness to his clothes. Like, he's wearing black jeans this season. He's also wearing Converse, which it feels like something that he thought Eddie would probably wear. So it's cool to kind of slowly edge him a little bit darker and a little less preppy. You know, maybe his mom's not buying all of his clothes now. The shirt that he's wearing in teal has, you know, like the diamond shape, and it's a, the angles of the shirt are a little more edgier. So it's like you're physically seeing sharper images and sharper corners on him because he's turning a little bit edgier. And if you don't know, there's this whole theory surrounding Mike and Will and Blue Meets Yellow in the West. I will talk about that a lot more as we get into it, but basically I think that it's important to mention when and where he's wearing green, blue, or yellow. Same thing that goes for Will. I just noticed over time that there are specific moments in the show where they're wearing specific colors that just kind of match the situations that they're in. And it felt like it was a little bit more than just a coincidence. So yeah. Um, but yeah, the yellow stripes are in between black and white stripes. When he finds Elle at the end of the episode, he's wearing an all blue long sleeve shirt and Elle is wearing a yellow Benny's shirt. I think this is because while searching for Will, he finds who the key is to finding Will, Elle. I also want to add that throughout season one, Elle is consistently compared to Will slash a boy by police, Benny's friends, Troy, etc. I think Mike's costuming is really important and telling. Mike's yellow stripes are small early in this episode because he wants to find Will, he just has no idea where he is or what's happened. And at the end of this episode, he's in all blue and Elle is in yellow. His hope for finding Will is in someone else. Someone else has the hope for finding Will. And he, he doesn't know it at first, which in my opinion is why, he, why she changes into blue because he doesn't know that yet, but that could just be me reaching a little bit, but yeah. Season one, episode two. Mike hands Elle the blue shirt at 41 seconds, and at 48 seconds, Elle stands up to take her shirt off to change into the new blue shirt. And Lucas and Dustin both freak out and turn away, and Mike stops her and explains that she can have privacy if she changes in the bathroom. And he points to the bathroom and he's like, um, privacy, get it? You can have privacy in there. Um, and while his reaction could be queer coded, it could also just be because he has two sisters, but I included it because why not? At 3.02, Mike gives Elle a yellow sleeping bag and she gets in his fort where she sleeps, which is a common parallel to Castle Byers. I will talk more about the Castle Byers, Mike's fort parallel thing later, but I, it is important to mention that there's a lot of parallels between the two. His first half episode of, of episode two is a red and blue shirt with yellow and white stripes. Elle continues to wear the blue shirt. At 22.50 is Mike's first closet slash hiding imagery, as he is hiding Elle in his closet from his mom so she doesn't find her. 24.09, Mike and his mom have a very coded conversation. <laughs> I think a couple of people have talked about this. Karen says, All this that's been going on with Will, I can't imagine what it's been like for you. It just, I want you to feel like you can talk to me. I never want you to feel like you have to hide anything from me. I'm here for you. Okay. I mean, this talk on its own is pretty coded, but then when you couple that with John and Will's talk from season four, it just feels like there's a crazy amount of like similarities. I'll play both clips side by side to explain what I'm talking about, but it just feels so incredibly specific. Like the way that they talk to Mike and Will in this scene, Jonathan and Karen, it feels very specific and it's very similar in the way they're talking and the things that they're saying to them. It just, I want you to feel like you can talk to me. I never want you to feel like you have to hide anything from me. I'm here for you. Okay. I just, I don't want you to forget that I'm here. And I'll always be here. No matter what. Because you're my brother. And I love you. And there is nothing in this world, okay? Absolutely nothing that will ever change that. You got that? Yeah. But yeah, 
It seems like way too similar of a parallel to not be intentional. 3206, Benny's friend admits that the kid he saw in the kitchen could have been Will. Another example of um, Elle being compared to Will or to a boy in general. Season 1, Episode 3. Mike's Episode 3 outfit is entirely blue slash green. Throughout this scene at 250, Mike is framed with two yellow lights on both sides of him and a Will drawing behind him. Elle is trying to find Will with the walkie-talkie. At 9.29, Mike's shirt appears more green as he, as he steps near Elle and closer to the bright yellow light still behind her. I also want to add that that is where Will is in Castle Byers. In comparison, the fort and Castle Byers, the light is in the back corner, which is where Will would be sitting if he was in Castle Byers. And in the scene where Elle finds him in Castle Byers through, in, in, um, through the, like, the void mindscape thing or whatever it's called, he's sitting exactly where the bright light is. So I really think that that could be intentional. At 2217, Lucas makes a remark about how obsessed Mike appears to be with Elle. Mike is completely clueless. I believe that this is Lucas misinterpreting Mike's desire to find Will with an infatuation for Elle. I say this because up until she channeled Will with the walkie and before that her knowing who Will was, Mike had a desire to send her back and find Will. I'm not saying that he that, that they never cared for each other because obviously that's not true, but they were they were they were clearly becoming friends of course but mike didn't show signs of liking her until after she found will so i think that that's important because another cuz something that he did say in his monologue was that he loved her ever since he met her which we know isn't true because for the first like 2 days that he knew her all he wanted to do was try to send her back and of course he meant well he is, I'm not saying he hated her, that's absolutely not true, but he wanted to send her back and his priority was to find Will. So saying that he loved her at first sight is kind of a lie. It's, it's not true and it's provably not true. At 22.33, Troy approaches the boys and makes fun of Lucas who is mock proposing to Mike to mess with him. Troy makes some homophobic and rude comments about Will, trips Mike and calls him frog face and leaves. I actually have a theory about the frog face thing, but I'll talk more about that in my season two video because it'll make more sense there. But I do have a little bit of a theory working with, with the, the nickname that Troy called him, which was frog face. 4407, Elle leads the boys to Will's house. Mike's shirt is the darkest it's been this episode. At 4415, Will's body is found by the quarry. Heroes starts playing. The song Heroes is associated with Byler, Jancy, and Jopper. If you don't know what that means, it's Mike and Will, Jonathan and Nancy, and Joyce and Hopper. Mike says, it's not Will, it can't be, on the lyric, though nothing will drive us away. It's not Will. It can't be. Mike flips out on Elle and leaves to bike home. Quick note, he yells, what is wrong with you, which could be him projecting, but he, I mean, he just... He just found out his friend is dead. I mean, I imagine he's probably pretty distraught. The other boys were also very distraught. I can't imagine what it must be like. I mean, I know that he was alive, but they didn't know that. They genuinely, like, they, they saw them, they saw police pull their friend's body out of the water. I imagine that was very traumatizing for them. I feel like nobody ever talks about that. Like, that must have been so traumatizing for Lucas, Will, and Dustin, sorry, Lucas, Dustin, and Mike to see Will being pulled out of the quarry like that. Like, I just can't even, like, oh my god, I'm gonna go down this, like, rabbit hole of thinking about that. I'm so sorry. But, like, I just find that so sad that they had to go through that. He walks into the house at 4848 on the lyrics, and the guns shot above our heads. The guns. Michael? Shot above our What's wrong? He breaks down and hugs his mom on the lyric, and we kissed as though nothing could fall. A lot of people talk about this lyric because it's like, it's a little funny that he's breaking down and hugging his mom after finding out that his best friend died. And the lyric that plays in that exact moment is, and we kissed as though nothing could fall. <laughs> it's just kind of like, it's interesting. The camera pans out, yellow lights are on both sides of them. They're in frame on both sides. This is on the lyric and the shame. And there's a beat. And it cuts away to the buyers. So Jonathan and um, Joyce hugging um, in front of the, in front of the, what's it called? What are the lights on the front of the car? I don't know. The lights on the front of the car. They're crying and they're hugging. In this scene, the lyric is, the shame was on the other side. This subtext feels like its message is super clear. Like Mike's shame, his internalized homophobia, that's the theory is that he has internalized homophobia 
is on the other side of town with the buyers. The buyers and Wheeler's houses are on the opposite sides of town. His shame is on the other side, and it cuts away to the buyers. You could also argue that the other side specifically means the upside down, where Will is, because in season four, both Nancy and Steve refer to the upside down as the other side. His shame, Mike's shame, was on the other side, with the buyers, with Will. <laughs> It's just crazy to me that that, like, that's a real thing that happened in the show. This scene coupled with these lyrics in these moments with these innuendos. It's like, it's so crazy. Like, it's, it's crazy to me. When I, when it really clicked in my head, I was like, there is no way. I told my brother about it. He was shocked. Like, I was like, that's, that's so crazy. Also, the more I think about it, the more I realize that Mike had to bike all the way home after that because the quarry is closer to the buyer's house, which means that it's further away from his house. So he had to bike across town, probably crying the whole time, and then he walks in and then just breaks down in his mother's arms. Like that, oh, it just breaks my heart. Season one, episode four. At 5.43, Ted asks if he should go check on Mike and Karen says to give him time. I want to point this out because I love how on numerous occasions, Karen shows that she understands how important Will is to Mike. It's just, it, it's what makes me believe that if Mike does come out in season five, he'd probably come out to his mom. Like, and Karen would probably not, like, I feel like she'd be accepting because she's always been very understanding of his situation with Will because she... She said, I don't want you to feel like you have to hide anything from me. She's talking about how she can't imagine what this must be like for him and with everything going on with Will. And I just feel like on numerous occasions, especially in the season, she specifically acknowledges how hard this must be for him because of how much Will means to him. And it just, I just think it's sweet that she recognizes how important they are to each other, whether it's platonic or romantic. I just think it's sweet that she like sees how important they are to each other, which is just nice. At 6.04, Mike is looking through his binder of Will's drawings, still wearing the green shirt. He yells at Elle, and a yellow light is behind both of them, but it's brighter behind Elle, and it's still in the spot that Will would be in if he was still in, in Castle Byers, if he was still there on the Upside Down. At 7.06, Mike hears Will singing in the walkie. He recognizes his voice and rushes over to Elle, and the bright light where Will is sitting in Castle Byers. At 29.16, Mike is annoyed that a bunch of fakers came to Will's assembly. At 30.19, Mike confronts Troy for laughing during the assembly. Look at these fakers. <laughs> oh, you were such a great Hey, shut up. Hey, Troy! Troy makes some very homophobic remarks about Will and Mike, who's on the verge of tears, pushing Troy. Troy stands up and charges at Mike, who doesn't move, insinuating he was gonna fight. Like, it, the way he just kind of stands there when Mike, when Troy start, like, is getting ready to charge at him, it seems like Mike was fully prepared to fight him in that moment. Like, he didn't, he didn't move. He was ready. And that's, that's honestly so heartbreaking. He was angry and ready. Like, he, he would have fought Troy. <laughs> Dead, Wheeler. Dead! At 29.33, Mike wears a green jacket to Will's funeral. At 33.10, his outfit while walking to where the compass is leading is a shirt and green pants. 41.36, Mike has little to no reaction to you're just excited that a girl's not grossed out by you, which is what Lucas says to him. But he yells at Lucas when he says that Will is dying. Screw you, Mike. You're blind. Blind because you like that a girl's not grossed out by you. But wake up, man! Wake the hell up! She knows where Will is. And now she's just letting him die in the upside down. Shut up! I feel like this is like the second time that it's been like shown to us that Mike doesn't actually have an infatuation for Elle. And it's at least one that he's not aware of, to be clear. But like, if he, do if he did have a crush on her, which I'm not gonna sit here and act like he totally didn't. It's just the theory. But if he did have a crush on her, it could just be him denying his feelings, but I think that this is because he didn't. Season 1, episode 6. At 8.55, Mike is upset. He's wearing a shirt with stripes and a green collar. His hope for finding Will is kind of fading. He sees his fort and he angrily destroys it. This is a direct parallel down to the music sounding really similar to Will destroying Castle Byers in season 3, episode 3. This is because he's losing hope and he feels betrayed by Elle. Will felt kind of similarly when he broke down in season 3, episode 3. It wasn't the exact same, but it was similar. At 3503, the iconic only love makes you that crazy, sweetheart, and that damn stupid line. I'll talk more about this line in my season 2 through 3 videos, but 
I mean, preview, the whole crazy together thing. Like, I just feel like the terms crazy and stupid are used so frequently in Stranger Things to represent love. And so the fact that Mike, Mike and Will specifically have that really romantically coded scene together where they're like, yeah, crazy together. Like, it's so sweet. At 3602, Mike is wearing all green when Troy approaches the boys, Dustin and Mike. 3910, Mike jumps off the cliff to save Dustin, and his face before he does just, like, it breaks my heart. He he would have died, and he would have died where Will's body had been found, wearing all green. I could easily be overthinking this, but I think that that, that itself could be intentional. Season 1, Episode 7. At 918, Ted says, Our son with a girl? I swear, Ted has so many, like, small little comments throughout the show that just feel very, like, quietly homophobic. It's It's, like... It's interesting to me that that happens more than once, where he says things that most people are just like, nah, this is Ted being Ted, but no, it sounds very intentional. 1601, an agent walks out of the Wheeler's house, a box with a yellow sleeping bag, D&D game, and a D&D manual inside. This, to me, feels like too specific, too specific of a shot for it to be random. This could be a visual representation of the agents getting in the way of Mike finding Will, but it could also just be like a shot that they included. But I think that it could be more because it's a box with a yellow sleeping bag, a D&D game, and a D&D manual. Like, that just feels really specific to put those three specific items into that box and to show the specific shot where you can see everything in that box. It just feels kind of intentional. At 2816, Mike and Nancy talk. Nancy says, I knew you were acting weird. I just thought it was because of Will. Mike says the same thing to Nancy about Steve. At 2848, Mike says, do you like Jonathan now? And Nancy says, what? No. She looks away, smiling. She closes her eyes and shakes her head. It's not like that. She looks up at Mike. She shows a few common indicators that someone is lying. Fidgeting, unusual blinking, no eye contact when speaking, shifty eyes. And then she asks if he likes Elle. He looks her straight in the eye, <laughs> doesn't blink or hesitate, and says, What? No. Ew. Gross. I knew you were acting weird. I just, I thought it was because of Will. I knew you were acting weird, too. I thought it was because of Steve. Do you like Jonathan, though? What? No. No, it's, it's not, it's not like that. Do you like Eleven? What? No, ew. Gross. He maintains eye contact, and then when he's done answering, he looks her up and down in a way that indicates a rude, disapproving attitude. She seems a bit confused, then they both keep walking. It just feels kind of interesting to me that hers, her answer was specifically proven to be a lie, because she was like, what? No, no, it's, it's not like that. She literally had her eyes closed throughout that entire, it's not like that. Her eyes were literally closed. She showed like multiple indicators of lying, but then Mike looks her straight in the eye and says, what? No, ew, gross. And then he like turns away, but he looks her up and down real quick in a weird, like, what is wrong with you kind of look. <laughs> and I just find that so fascinating that his answer seems so unbelievably genuine. He was like, what? No. Like, he just, he seemed like he was being honest. It was kind of funny to me rewatching that. I was like, he doesn't, like, I don't get the vibe that he's lying. Like, I think that he, I think he's being serious. He's like, what? No. So I just wanted to point that out because I find it very interesting. Season one, episode eight. At 2412, Mike tells Elle about how she can live with them. Karen would make her food. Ted and Karen would be her parents. And Nancy and Holly would be like her sisters. Mike says he won't be like her brother because that's different. Then he says... I don't know, I guess it's not. It's stupid. I, I honestly think he says this because he wants to go to the snowball with her and he thinks that it's weird to go with your sister. He tries to explain that you're supposed to go with someone you like and when he struggles to explain what he means by that, he kisses her. And while I won't say he didn't have a crush on her, he could be bi, we don't know. I just think him being gay and this being an example of him projecting makes more sense narratively. Because his response being like, well I, well, I know you're not supposed to go with your sister is kind of interesting to me because it feels like his entire motivation for wanting to go with her was simply because they're friends, but going with his sister would be weird. And so he's thinking, well, you have to go with someone you like, and so I guess I like you if I want to go with you. Which I don't think, yeah, I just, I don't think that's because he liked her. I think it's just because he thought that that's what you're supposed to do. Which, being a person, like, just, this is coming from a person who's masked basically her whole life because, like, growing up a neurodivergent kid, any person who 
has experienced that will probably agree with me here like coming up with reasons like that to do things that seem enjoyable makes a lot of sense like I've I've I, I can remember countless times where like I've specifically agreed to something or done something because it seemed like an enjoyable thing to do but I didn't actually understand the concept like I've been to dances before like school dances and stuff I never understood why they were why they existed I don't understand parties at all they make no sense to me they seem they seem pointless but um, I used to go to them sometimes because it made sense. It was like, well, people find them enjoyable, so why wouldn't I go? But, like, that's not a good reason to go. You should do these things because you want to or because you like a person, not because they seem like a normal thing to do. And it just feels very... It just it, it hit close to home, him being like, well, I know you're not supposed to go with your sister because it just felt like he was coming up with a reason that made sense to him to go to something that he didn't understand, like going with your sister is weird so I guess I like you because I want to go with you. At 3333 Mike promises Elle that he'll take care of her and they'll go to the snowball. At 3708 Elle dies and Mike's reaction to losing his friend and realizing that he can't that he can't fulfill his promise like literally breaks my soul. Like the way he starts like crying and he's just screaming her name and he like doesn't know where she is like that genuinely gets me. I always cry. It always gets me. It's like so sad. Because this poor kid has been through so much and then he makes a friend and he really cares about this person and then she just dies. I know that she didn't actually die, but like, he doesn't know that. He This is the second time this has happened to him. Like, this poor kid. He's been through so much in such a little amount of time. At 4141, Mike is the only one who stays awake at the hospital. When Jonathan comes in, Mike wakes the others and runs down the hall to Will's room. I think it's so sweet the way the boys were all so excited to see him. Like, yay, they finally get to see their best friend after so long and like, it was so sweet, their little reunion. Mike is the first to hug Will, his head where his where, where his heart is. And I read a headcanon that he did this so that he could hear Will's heartbeat. And I think that's the cutest thing ever. Whether it's like the most fan fiction, cringy thing you've ever heard. Like, I don't even care. It sounds so sweet, the concept of him doing that because he wanted to hear his heartbeat. Even if that's not true, I'm going to hold on to that because I need that. Like, that's like that's adorable. Mike and Will's collars are both green. Mike has bright green stripes and Will has green and yellow triangles on his gown, like his hospital gown, which I think is like, come on, that has to be intentional. Them both having matching green collars and then him having green and yellow on his on his like gown. Like that seems that seems kind of in intentional to me. So that's all of my evidence for season one. I hope this made sense. I just kind of went through all the little moments that I noticed over time and if you enjoyed this give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my toast little family thank you all so much for the recent support you guys are awesome i've been getting so many nice comments that genuinely like brighten my day it's been kind of a rough month so i really appreciate all the support and i love that i have this outlet to talk about byler because it means so much to me so just thank you all you guys are awesome and if you agree or disagree with anything i said please comment i want to hear your thoughts on this and if I missed anything, please tell me because that would make me so excited. The idea that like you guys that found something that I didn't, that would be so exciting. So if I missed anything or if you want to add anything, please do. Remember to be respectful to each other. And um, yeah, I will see you guys for the season two video. I did not expect this to be this long. See, this is why I did four separate videos because this is, I've been filming for 40 minutes. Like <laughs> this, this is why, because it was going to turn out this long. So yeah, I love you all so very much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.